Jazz. Here with me today, as always, Binary Gary, or Gary in real life. I'm also joined with by Allison Plus, who is Allison in real life. I'm your host, Jazz Sequence, who is Chris in the real world. Welcome. Join the journey with us on Binary Jazz. You gotta quit with this real world, real world stuff, man. It's all just happening in here. It's none of it's, none of it matters. None of it's real. A simulation? I mean, it's not a simulation. Like in my head, it's real. In your head, it's real. But those reels, they don't intersect. And with well, I'm glad that, I brought this to him. Yeah, that was stellar. <laughs> that was like, and? <laughs> uh, I picture, I know you probably aren't, well, no. I was going to say, I just picture you like a dinner table with your kids and Rhonda, and then like all of a sudden everyone's chatting, and then all of a sudden you're like, you know, this is it. <laughs> our, our thoughts and your thoughts are different. <laughs> Everybody's like, Reality is an illusion. You know, kids. <laughs> it's not. Uh, what I'm saying, damn it, it's not. What I'm saying is that we have completely separate realities. Right. Well, you're the center of your own story. God. That's depressing. <laughs> you're the main character. Live it up. <laughs> As, as we head into the end of season three of Binary Jazz, the moral, the, the ongoing theme of uh, Binary Jazz in 2020 is, damn, that's depressing. <laughs> I, oh gosh, I have we're, we're like spiraling out. <laughs> oh, spiral is a great topic to, to couple with this, actually. But I, be, before, I, before I digress from the Before you talk about space? Yeah. 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 Uh, time and never mind um i was thinking uh i needed to share with you all on a walk the other day uh, my constant vacillation on whether the internet is awful or wonderful um i had a temporary moment where the greatness of the internet uh outshined the terribleness of the internet uh which was a cat video or what no, 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 no. I was thinking about, I was actually thinking that's about. that's the only thing good on the internet for me. Well, here's what I was thinking about. Like the um, dodo, nothing else. So like the 60s were a time when there was um, like a big uh, social recognition and need for upheaval in like, wow, we're doing some shitty stuff. Uh, incidentally, that continues. Um but the benefit of the internet is the leveling the playing field for voices that uh, weren't able to have uh, equal and fair representation representation in the 60s. So outside of all the craziness that uh, obviously is the world right now, why is this not in gallery view? Um, the internet brings, brings like a pathway, a voice for... Uh, people that I certainly want to hear from. So thanks internet. That is the thing. For not being like complete. I'm always Sorry. fascinated by your need to make it be one thing or the other. You and me both, honestly. <laughs> like it kind of lives in the middle for me. Um, it can be I good and bad. I think for me, I vast, like, yeah, it, it certainly is. Like, there's no, there are, everything is grayscale. I'm totally with that. But I feel like I vacillate dramatically on the internet. 
And mm -hmm. often I'm just convinced that it is just absolute trash and there's no redeeming qualities of the internet. So mm -hmm. I'm thankful for a moment where not only did I pass like center, but I even got to an area where like I thought maybe part of the uh, magic of the internet is good. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just here to deliver shareholder value. That's <laughs> my internet is good story recently is that a few weeks ago, a, I got a direct message from someone on Twitter, which normally let's just be honest, mm. is not a good okay. thing in my world. Um, but it was from someone and they were just like, Hey, this is either going to be right on point or super weird, but are you so-and-so from live journal from however many years ago? And I was like, Oh my God, I am so-and-so from live journal specifically oh, not so saying cool. my screen name. Cause I still, yeah. it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and it was this woman that I was friends with for like years and years on the internet. And she like tracked me down and now she's living in Chicago and we like caught up and it was great. So Wow. I don't know. I thought that was nice. That's cool. And also, wow. apparently, I'm very findable. <laughs> I mean, you are on a podcast. You're a star of a podcast. Girl. Star on a podcast. Um, I don't have an internet as good story. Uh, <laughs> well, aren't, we're, we're a part, aren't we a part of your internet as good story? I mean, story? yes. Uh, always. <laughs> it's, um, like, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> it's like, I can't really... Nothing comes to mind about <laughs> things on the internet, but I do have I do have a a, a I, I did I had a so last night Thursday night is when we do our family D and D, um, and I think I broke uh, I think I broke my players a little bit uh, last night, uh, and and again to be clear, my players in this context are my family, my kids, and my partner. I think I broke them a little bit. Uh, so I'll, I'll set the stage a little bit, um, because I think I, 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 my point is that, that I achieved my goal, I think, I believe with, and my goal being moral ambiguity. Um, so, oh. so, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, the party of adventurers gets contacted by this really shady guy who offers them a job because he knows that they're in debt to pay off, uh, to, to, they're in debt to pay off the loan that they got to make repairs to this uh, tavern that they sort of inherited, um, <clears throat> but they fixed up and, 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 and it's in operation again. So they're in debt. And so this guy comes in, he knows that they, that they have this debt and he's like, I've got a job for you. And they don't really ask a lot of questions. It's like, okay, sure. It's going to pay off our debt. We'll take the job. And the job is to uh, be essentially um, hired guard on this cargo ship that's going up the coast uh, to deliver some cargo to another coastal city up, uh, up north. And they're sure, fine, that, 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 works, that works well. Uh, while on the ship, um, <laughs> they, well, first of all, they, they notice a guy who seems like basically like strung out uh, and they're not really sure what's up with that, but he's definitely got some sort of habit and his fingers have this like brown or blackish uh, stain to them. Um, and, and they're like, well, that's weird. And, and, and nobody seems to be surprised by this dude being kind of strung out. Like he, like, this is a normal thing for the crew. Um, eventually like the first thing, the first thing that they said they wanted to do, um, when, uh, the first thing my daughter said she wanted to do when, uh, they, they got the job is she wants to see what's inside the, these crates that they're shipping. Um, so they eventually do that. They open up the crates and they find that that hidden amongst the like barley um, and some of them have like beans and other sort of like, you know, normal like trade goods. Um, there are these pouches, uh, these rather large pouches that contain this strange blackish brownish powder uh, that they're not sure what it is. So they grab one because that's what you do because they don't know what it is. So they're just going to pocket this thing and, 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 and just kind of see what see what happens. Um, so, uh, they, they do get a sense that it is, uh, I think they were able to identify that it is like derived from mushrooms, um, and it has some sort of like magical component to it. Um, so, uh, so I like the dramatic tea sip there. Yeah, I know me too. I was just like, what did you make them decide between Chris? <laughs> no, that was effective. <laughs> um, eventually... 
they realize uh, they that this that one of them recognizes uh, or remembers that there are stories of a, a particular sort of drug uh, that is made from mm, psychotropic mushrooms with like magic uh, like imbued in it, and it can be consumed in a variety of different ways. Um, the base format that normally comes in is this powder, but it can be smoked, it can be cooked into food, it can be put into a tea, it can be snorted, it can, there's, you can do whatever with it. And uh, different, there are different strains or variations that add different elements and, and effects to it. Um, and it's highly, highly, highly addictive. Um, so they realize they have this thing, so they put the thing back. Um, and, and then so they realize they're shipping a bunch of drugs like like hidden in the cargo up to this other coastal city so they realize they're working for some not so great folks right um so they they their ship gets attacked by pirates uh they fight off the pirates the ship has to 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 go into coast to make repairs and while they're on the coast uh they through investigating a, a, a house on the hill that looked like unused um they discover that they're underneath the house there are these other sort of smuggler criminal like smugglers that are like using this house as a base um and uh and they are they were about to be they were captured uh by the smugglers and they were going to just get chucked out uh into sea but they made a deal with these smugglers uh to basically snitch on uh the pirates that they're working for hand over all the cargo uh, and um, and then in exchange for potentially money and like safe passage to <laughs> somewhere, um, the details weren't really worked out because he didn't know how much what they had and how much of what they had was legit and whatever. Um, so uh, so last so that was all the setup. So last night we actually got to the uh, got to the the actual. Uh, I don't know, assault on the ship, I guess. So the, the deal was that, that he told uh, them uh, that he would send them a message and that would be, that would tell them that, you know, it was time that they would, and make sure that the, the guards, the watch guards are taken care of. Um, so um, uh, they did, they, I think they did still have a small amount of the stuff. Uh, not, a, not like a big pouch, but they had some of it. So uh, my daughter, who's also the ship's cook, uh, cooked some of this stuff into a batch of cookies that she made for uh for after dinner to give all to the crew uh she made uh seven cookies with this stuff in and the rest of the batch was was fine um and so after after they she made the dinner she gave out the cookies and then she was also like saving some so that at the at the at the changing of the watch she would give some to the people coming off and then also some to the people coming on and um, and one of the people that was uh, that was gonna that uh, my son was able to to get one of the watch duties. So there's two other watch guards, and uh, she gives two cookies to each of the other dudes, and then she just gives three other random crewmates the other three cookies, um, uh, just to sort of sow chaos, right? Um, so, but the two watch the two watch guards are getting double doses, right? Uh, and she doesn't really know how much the right amount is because she's never done this thing. She doesn't really know much about this stuff. So she's just like putting some in mm. um, and as you, do. As, yeah. as you do. Right. Um, and uh, and so the the moral ambiguity comes in when they start to see the effects of this stuff being consumed on like like on on the crewmates. Um <laughs> And but like, like, do they help these people now, or do they just let them let them right. ride it well, out? Like, yeah. So, so it, it becomes really like uh, stark, really quick. Like, one of them is is like has like super paranoia and is like yelling at everybody, and just going kind of nuts. One of them is like got like this this crazy like uh, fever and is shaking uh, uncontrollably. The two guys on uh, that are on watch, one of them had like just starts getting like itching and like feels like there's bugs crawling over and eventually starts clawing at his skin and like ripping chunks of skin off because he's got <sighs> stuff all over him. And then the other guy is uh, spends a period of, of like just the fever and then just like dunk, dunk, down out. 
uh and and like the, like so seeing seeing the way that this affected it was like oh and then and then the and then the smugglers come on and they're like okay so let's let's do this and they go down and there's all, obviously all the other crew that needs to be taken care of so now they're 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 helping this group of shady individuals uh and they're fighting with this other group of shady individuals um some of whom they've been living with for you know a, you know a few days on this ship uh feeding them and like and then seeing the effects of this of this like like weird drug that they don't really know very much about, but is now like like having a very real effect in front of them, and they're kind of going down pretty easily. Um, all of the the crew, and they're like, um, "I don't really know that I want to kill this person anymore." This and it was like that moment that I was like, "Yes, moral ambiguity accomplished." <laughs> On my own family, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and loved ones. It's like a really elongated like trolley problem. Only you have to like yes. watch. Yeah, but it's, but you're, it's, it's in slow yourself. motion. Yeah, you're like you're like this. The trolley is coming, oh. and as it as it approaches, it just it's not going fast at all. It's just very <laughs> yeah. slowly. There are the people, and it's very slowly just crunching over their bones. You can hear the visceral sound of the bones <sighs> crunching under the. Yes, yes. Also, lesson <laughs> to that... not ex not accept baked goods from your daughter. <laughs> That last part right there is why I don't D and D. I could I couldn't handle that description you just gave. Like I squirmed in my seat and I'm still viscerally uncomfortable. <laughs> I know I'd constantly be getting up from the table and then people would need to recap, but like nobody wants to recap that. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I just need more water. Was, I'll just be right back. <laughs> it was it was it was very satisfying, and like I mean, part of me like also like. I mean, yes, I like, I feel like maybe I went a little bit far, but also like, I don't know, as a parent, like life lessons, right? Like things aren't black <laughs> yeah, and white. I knew, like... gonna... <laughs> I knew you were going to say life lessons. <laughs> That's so weird. I'm very predictable. Um, uh, yeah. So it was, it was, but it was good because like, I, I feel like, um, especially like the, at the beginning of, of like an adventuring campaign or whatever, like there are moral decisions that sort of sh potentially could shape like the direction that the party takes in, in the future and the decisions that they make. And like, they went into this making bad decisions and they made more bad decisions. And then they just kept building on the bad decisions. And D&D is all about bad decisions, right? Like it's all about things blowing up in unexpected ways. Uh, and this blew up in, in the perfect way. And, and like, and the thing is that like, I really expected, like, I had this whole thing planned out for when they arrived at the other city and, like, what they would do there and all this stuff. And <laughs> and and uh, my partner's like, no, we're gonna we're gonna sell these people out and we're gonna get a ship back the hell out of here. <laughs> Wait a minute, at the end of the night, do you kind of just look around and you're just like, who are you people? <laughs> You were supposed to sell them out. You were supposed to do the right thing. Oh, I, I, I loved that. I was so proud. <laughs> it was amazing. It was like all this preparation. I like had downloaded stuff about the other city. <laughs> like I was like was getting like, all that stuff. It. It was, that's all out the window now. <laughs> we're dealing with these pirates and we're taking them down. <laughs> uh, so that's my great thing. <laughs> uh, so I think at this point we have a topic. Oh, right. Topic. Uh, the topic this week is Noling. Noling. Uh, K N O L L I N G. Uh, okay, so a knoll. Uh, since we're 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 talking about D and D, a knoll is um, uh, it's not a K N O L L. It's a G N O L. But uh, a knoll is sort of a large, almost like hyena-like uh, humanoid mm -hmm. creature that uh, is kind of feral, but then they, they, they live in like packs. Um, so knolling would be when you uh, uh, live out in the forest uh, with like a group of people and you like live in a cave and you make that space sort of like livable and you kind of don't go out and see other people, but you live in a very sort of small uh, clustered community. It sounds on brand is, for me. <laughs> is this knoll spelled K N O L L? Is that the same as like the grassy knoll? Uh, yes, same spelling, yes, different meaning. Spelling. So knolling is. Well, you think it's different meaning? Presidents. There. I think it's pretty clear. Murdering U.S. presidents. Murdering U.S. presidents. Go knolling. <laughs> Not particularly. Yeah. Sorry. Also, particular. I got us all on some kind of watch list for that. Yeah, you're already great. on the watch thanks, list, thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gary. Oh, I know. I know. 
I'm, I'm certain of that. But I'm also not concerned about it because apparently terrorism is is fine. So that's that's fair. Well, as long me as you're flapping white. my. I mean, uh, we started this episode with me being extremely pale, so I think. That... <laughs> uh noling so uh is it is it like i feel like <laughs> i feel like it's it's like when you go out for like a sunday drive in an area where there's a lot of like yeah you're, you're going yeah, yeah. Oh, i yeah, don't know if that's true but that sounds like fun doesn't it yeah, yeah. It sounds or, way better than my previous suggestion or or um a little less there, somber there are there are knolls mm -hmm. and then there's like little, little ones that are knollings <laughs> then the knoll and, and the knolling. It's, it's a hill. So while you're out, yet. while yeah. you're out knolling <clears throat> on a knoll, you might find on your knolling a little knolling. <laughs> yes. Well, that's adorable. <laughs> I wish that was right. Um, on the other side of that spectrum, again, since I'm on the other side of the knoll. <laughs> on the other side of the knoll, again, since since I have uh, D and D in the brain, apparently. Uh, this is what happens, I guess, when we do this on Fridays. Um, <laughs> um, a knolling. I like it. I like a knolling is a creature, uh, a sort of grassy creature that is uh, that disguises oh. itself as a knoll, but is actually Ooh. a living knoll uh, mm -hmm. that uh, wants to eat you. How disturbing would that be if you're like walking over, like you're a walking on something and mound, and it starts <laughs> moving? <laughs> and like, like oh yeah. no. I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> I would read that picture book. My my right? stories are all about that experience of like, oh, I made mm. <laughs> <laughs> a story of unease. <laughs> I uh, this is neither here nor there, but that's what uh, the show is about. So it's yeah. it's it's definitely. I will there. often say to my older kids, "Say hello to your knees," and they say, "Hi knees," and it cracks me up. Hi, niece. I, it's dumb. Anyway. <laughs> hi, hi, niece. Is that like, is that like, but, that like in, but. in, uh, in, uh, throw mama from the train and they're having this intense discussion about how murder is bad. And, and then, and then Danny DeVito's character looks out the window and is like, Oh, look cows. <laughs> it's not dissimilar yes, from it's that. It's bad. I did, I did a horrible, horrible thing. It's terrible. Cows. That was uh, right. That was the twenty twenty side. Twenty twenty side, <laughs> patented. <laughs> Is that a thing? It, yeah. I it must be right. It, it has to be right. Yeah. I think I read something recently that like, uh, I don't know. I don't remember what what the context was at this point, but I, there was something about like every breath in twenty twenty is a sigh. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of other things too, but that was that was the thing that I that I remembered. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a thing. Mm. Also, well. apparently, also apparently a, a thing is is uh, home brewing, home brewing, uh, fantasy drugs, uh, with elaborate details and rules. I've got a five page document that's not that's incomplete about this this drug that I invented. <laughs> It's like, I, I think, I don't know, it's really funny because there are certain things that I think each of us have topic wise that we'll just get totally in the weeds of where someone will plant a seed and then I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I realized I come by it honestly, because my dad was telling me a story about how he's like doing business with someone and needed to find something and he basically went down this google rabbit hole of how sketchy this person was nice. and he's like meanwhile three hours later i came up for air and like he was like i called someone he's like he cold called someone and was just like hey what's up with this person i'm so and so you don't know me but i just want to know about this other person and the guy was like my dad's like i just really want to know <laughs> I'm like who like i was like detective agency family detective agency it's fair needs to happen what would you like if someone called like you if you were on the receiving end of that call how likely would you be to give out information 
if I had had like a poor experience, like it seemed like that was basically the vibe of what was happening with my dad's story, then I would yeah. probably be open about it once I found out like the why. Okay. Yeah. Because if someone's fair. like, I'm doing this thing, I saw that you almost had this deal with this person, but didn't. Like, why was that? Like, what were your yeah. red flags? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, that makes sense. Makes sense. But I would have to answer my phone first. So that's, fair. that's kind of a hurdle. Yeah. I, I, my rule is if you care, then you will leave a message. Yes. Because yeah. I have, I have, my phone does not ring if I do not know who you are. Yeah. So internet, Trent, there it was again. you can't, you can't call me. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Gary, what color is the wall walls of the room that you were in? What would you call that? Uh, this is a green. Oh no, maybe not. It's like a <laughs> aqua. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it, like when aqua first became I was like, like oh, this color. We're, we're having different experiences because I'm not experiencing except, green. Except for that one that's maroon straight behind me. Yeah. And the wall I'm facing is a lime green. Oh. So this this area is going to get some work done. I've actually kind of sorbet themed. <laughs> yeah. Let me bore you with some home improvement stuff. So I started on this wall all the way down at the end. I went in to the attic and there is um, about every like third section of stud had insulation and the rest had fallen on the floor. Nice. So I went, I started hanging insulation, which was fine. I was using the rolls. And then I got to some sections where the studs are spaced like very far apart or like four inches apart. Like this is weird. So I'm trying to figure out like how I can actually insulate that. And um, one of the ways is like actually spraying foam on the backside, like expanding foam, but there's all, it's ex crazy expensive. And also there's like all sorts of warnings on how you can kill yourself with this. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm not there yet. Um, Good call. <laughs> so what I've opted to do is I bought, this is, I don't know if this is a good idea or a bad idea and I'm gonna have to live with it. I bought um, house wrap, which is that like Tyvek unterrible stuff. Mm. It's uh, like a, almost like a paper, but not quite. Um, it's, it's very sturdy. So I'm stapling that to the studs and building like a cavity. And then I'm going to rent the, the foam, like not foam, uh, the insulation blower that actually just blows uh, fiberglass pieces. And I'm going to stick that in the gaps between and fill these up. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll take care of the areas where it is uh, very warm or not very warm the opposite cold i was like um, wow i was like insulation works different than how i thought <laughs> <laughs> well so i this this wooden thing right there mm -hmm. um that is an old because the house is old that's an old like fan um with just like a wood seal on it so take that wood off and it's just like an open metal box and you would turn that fan on open windows or doors downstairs and it would pull from downstairs up mm -hmm. so in the summer it's not, you know, a hundred degrees inside or whatever. Um, so up above me, there's like, you know, three and a half inches of insulation, which isn't enough. I'll add some more up there, but that's fine. Except right on this metal part, there's this like metal, you know, two foot tall chimney effectively. So you walk underneath that thing in the summer and you just like, it's just baking down. Um, and you walk underneath it when it's cold and it's like, oh, it's really chilly here. Um, so one of the first things I did is I just threw layers of insulation on top of that. Just like, you know, as I'm working on this, like I can insulate that thing. That's an easy first step. So that's a little bit better. But then also like this door here, that door is interesting because everything this way, there's like a little hatch here that I can access, but everything that way, I have to, I had to cut a hole in the wall there and, and dive into. So it's uh it's been an experience. I'm really, uh, really looking forward to this weekend and getting back in there. I have like a full face mask, like, Goggle. Yeah. Like the first time I worked up there, I didn't. And knocking down some of this old insulation, um, I came out of the attic and like my eyes were burning. And like mm -hmm. I had like a little, you know, fabric mask, not even like, you know, little construction mask on, but it was not doing enough to keep all this crazy particulate out of my lungs. And I was, and I was pretty much done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So now I have this thing and it's got these goggles that go on. And I, I, uh, I look like I'm, and then I have, a little headlamp I wear. I don't know why it's on my desk, but there it is. I'll be looking for that on Saturday. In case there's a power, power outage. 
so I can see it on your screen. <laughs> That's your weekend project. My weekend project is we uh, kickstarted a uh, a bidet uh, several months ago uh, called the Nars Hole. Uh, and it really, it was a, it was a, it was a combination of things because, um, we had been looking at bidets, but we didn't really know what to get. And then this Kickstarter popped up and like, Hey, here's a thing. We could just do that. Um, and it was, you know, relatively, it was cheaper than some of the other things and, and also not knowing, and, and we don't have, um, so it's not going to be heated, uh, like some are it's just going to take the water like it you get use the the same water source that the toilet uses you just plug mm -hmm. it into this thing and then it goes uh it goes through um so my weekend project is going to be installing these these bidets and in, in um in the in the bathrooms it has a, a little the the logo so their 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 tagline is poop like a viking uh and the logo is like a viking helmet sitting on top of a butt i love it um <laughs> Be careful when you're turning off the shutoff valves, supply lines to the toilet. Because a lot of times, like if you didn't turn them off recently, they get a lot of uh, calcification inside. And mm -hmm. you turn that and you might get a little dribble out the front. Don't panic if it dribbles out the front. There's, there's, so one of one of the two shutoffs is brand freaking new because it was put oh, in nice. some of the plumbers that, that have been coming through. We're done with that project now, by the way. We've had plumbers for almost... Uh, for like the last month coming over doing various things and i think we're finally done with that uh but the upstairs is still older it has a shutoff valve but it's 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 an older one so that's that's the one i'm more concerned about but the downstairs one should be should be fine because like everything is new downstairs we have a new toilet new shutoff valve like the pipes underneath it are new like it's like it's yeah guys i'm gonna have to come up with a project for this weekend i, know, right? I don't have anything <laughs> your, your project i don't think you do your project i mean i think a project can be at my 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 star chart or whatever oh i posted so much in slack i posted it as a reply and now i'm like oh i probably should have put it as a document I, and uploaded it it's going to be a well, lot more readable <laughs> that's that's fair <laughs> um, i did gary you still I have typed, to do it i know i did it and then i typed my email address wrong and i never i was like oh, i'll just get the copy from my all oh. so i went back <laughs> thinking all my information was still populated and i'm like i I don't know the it's like it four is. fields. Yeah, it's like it's literally four fields. I think it was yeah. like a birth day, day, month, and year of birth, and I time, know. and you're done. Do it, do it. I want to I mean, see how compatible we all are. Come on. Okay, I will do it today. I want to. I just want to see the patterns if there are any. I yeah. haven't found any yet, but. Um. I. I. Uh. I'm like in the early stages of studying the um ideas of how like societies grow and develop um there's a lot of great recent writings on that um Any and so i'm really excited authors or i don't know off the top of my head i have no. to dig back in my notes um that's a very random it's not it totally to just, goes hand in hand yeah. with where i've been trying to understand life the universe and everything I mean, it, it absolutely is. It goes hand in hand. Like the, the, the concept is that, or the concept of which I ended up here was that, I guess what we started the show with, that I can't, I can't understand your reality. But somehow there's this intersection point where as like groups of tribal people, we say, yeah, like enough with this, like doing this other thing would make things better. Um, because because generally, like, our default is to tolerate everything, you know? Do you um, think? I do. I mean, yeah, absolutely, I do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we tolerate Nobody all sorts of silly stuff. Yeah, no one wants the conflict. Oh, we tolerate, wants to, like, stop, stop. We tolerate broken food supply systems. We tolerate, I mean, that's that's one that I feel like is sort of on a cusp of, of awareness. But, I mean, I think an easy one is how long people just tolerated militarized police, really, you know? I mean, decades, decades. We, we, we tolerate lying to a certain extent politicians, and that's why it's a stark contrast right now is that, oh, well, this is too much lying. <laughs> what? Like that's, you know, like there's but that's, that's absolutely. the precedent yes, that you set years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like you've, got, you've gone past did not what we're societally vacuum. okay with, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, and, and I think it's even more micro than that. Like, like, um, look at just how different cities have standards for driving, 
you know, like, well, this city tolerates drivers that behave this way in this city or state or whatever, you know? Um, I, I think that, I think that tolerance is the, is the human default. So I'm really curious as to what's the, what's the domino point? What's the inflection point where you go, well, that's enough. And, and things change. I think if I could understand that, where that point is, I feel like I could be more effective in actually being involved in making things better as opposed to just like, I don't know. It's, you know, it's like very easy to be like, well, I, I mean, it's really easy to be like, well, I don't know. I don't even know how to help. So I'll throw money at some nonprofit. Right. But I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's more important to figure out how to um, identify what the tipping point is and just keep pointing at that thing. Cause if enough people tip on it, you know, you don't need a lot of momentum. If everybody's, if everybody's, you know, in the spot of tolerance and enough people get intolerant, people tolerate it, other people being intolerant, you know? But is Did this assuming there's- <laughs> Light was just like, ah! <laughs> is this assuming there's one tipping point for everything? No, no, this is okay. assuming that there is a way to, I, I Issue realize and understand, understand it and say, what are the what are the things that are preventing a tipping point here? What are the barriers? And and yeah. And in conjunction with that, it, it doesn't matter anyway because it's all in my head. It's all in your head. It's. <laughs> I have a lot of things. I, I think the negative think to this con moral, this right? this this concept of it all being in my head is, if it is, like this is this is this is what I came up with. Really? Come on. <sighs> yeah, you're better than that, Gary. It's definitely not in your head. <laughs> I know, but but our experienced realities. Uh, <laughs> I need to walk another 40 miles this week, apparently. That, that would be a podcast existential... unto itself, is just audio musings from you while you're walking. <laughs> Yeah, that that's its own podcast. Is Ooh, cows! The <laughs> existential, existential music. Existential of, ramblings of Gary on walks. Yeah, and you can just call it "Walk with Gary." Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, totally innocuous. You would never guess where this train is going to go. You would not know. <laughs> The suspense. That is that is amazing. I think it needs to happen. It should be a, a binary jazz network podcast. <gasps> Spinoff. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can only do it once a week because that's fine. That's a that's a good. That's we only do this once a week. Good cadence for podcasts. Oh, it's a really valid point, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say because the cadence of the way things work in my head, like one idea could last for eight or 10 or 20 walks. Yeah. Really yeah. like exploring that thing. Yeah. And often, often what will happen is I'll explore a thing. And then, and then once I feel like I've adequately explored it, the next thing will be like, why was that thing wrong? <laughs> that I spent miles convincing myself was the thing, you know? It's interesting that you're, I don't know, that you're like battling to convince yourself of something. Oh, well, I know what I'm thinking about tomorrow. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm psychoanalyzing, sorry. No, it's fine. It, it's a good, it's a, it's a, it is a, it's a valid point that I haven't really, really looked at much. Um, there's like a, there's a thing there. There's a, uh, like why, what's, what's behind this drive? And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, cause like ultimately, all right, let's just like pretend like fast forward that like I have this huge revelation uh, of some sort and like suddenly everything has meaning or no meaning and it doesn't matter one way or the other like what does that get me what then i don't know like, there's the, not like a like, finish line isn't the meaning that they're just thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on itunes or google play you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz.
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.